What is up, everybody? So good to see you. We are in session again for another whiteboard session. You guys are going to stick around for this because we're going to talk about the psychology of sales and why discounting works. Happy Black Friday to you all. Maybe it's Cyber Monday for you. I'm just having fun with some words. And we're going to talk about like why we're so compelled to buy things during sales periods. And do these concepts work in service-based industries? So if you're a service design shop, Will these concepts work for you? You're going to stick around for this. We're going to get right into it. I'm joined today by Stuart and Ricky. Ricky's editing. Stuart's on the camera there. Let's get right into it, okay? So Cyber Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Let's get into it. Boom. All right. Now, before some of you guys get really upset at me and say, Chris, I thought you told us never to discount. Well, let's talk about why you should never discount because what are we doing when we discount? What we're doing is we are training customers of ours to expect a discount when we buy. And this forms a pattern of behavior in the mind of your audience and your customer. And we can see this in retail especially. I don't know if you've noticed, but in the last 10 years, retail has gone through some really tough times. When I talk about retail, I'm talking about clothing stores, places where you go to buy stuff, to buy things in a physical environment. They're suffering. And a lot of of them are going out of business because they haven't figured out how to compete with online sales. Okay, so what they start doing is they do what you normally do when you start to panic because sales are down. You start to discount. You have flash sales. You have sales for every kind of holiday that you can imagine. Like I said, this creates an expectation in the mind of your customer and forms a pattern of behavior. You're training them to expect a discount so when they pay full price, they feel bad and so they don't buy. They just wait. Okay, um, something else that's happening during the sales is that when you build a relationship based on price, meaning that you're willing to discount, what happens is when the price goes up, the customers find somebody else. Other kinds of patterns that happen here. You start to cement in the mind of your customer your brand, and they start to think of you as the place to go when they don't have enough money. And so when they do have enough money, they go and hire somebody else who doesn't discount, who holds their line, who maintains a certain level of authority and expertise in their eyes. This sometimes can impact in-house design teams. We've seen this happen. You notice this, if you're working in-house, I know many of you guys that watch the channel work in-house, and you always wonder to yourself, why is it when they have the cool projects that are well-funded, why do they send that out of house? Why is the in-house team always stuck with the, the most boring work, the tightest deadlines, the maintenance, the routine work, while the cool new creative gets set by somebody out of house? It's because within the structure of the organization, this is not true of every organization, but of many, they look at the in-house team as the team that we have, and so they look very longingly across the way, the street, the city, the pond, whatever it is, to find the best in breed specialists that do exactly what they want to do. And that's why they do that. So there are patterns of behaviors that you don't want to establish because once that train track has been set, it is very difficult to get them off that track. So Ricky, how many people are watching live right now with us today? 257. 257. So I want to welcome all 257 of you guys uh, taking a little bit of time away from your busy buying schedule during this super hectic Cyber Monday where you can get a lot of stuff at a discount. Okay, so let's move on. So the idea generally is to never discount, but are there exceptions to the rule? Well, yeah, I think so, because every rule is made to be broken. So let's talk about what the exceptions are before I get into why these things work and how you can use this in your own business, okay? And I know we're getting very meta today, very meta, because coincidentally, it's Monday here for us, and I, I got to, you know, make sure that you guys know that we're also doing our own Cyber Monday promotion because Black Friday bleeds into Cyber Monday. If you guys go into our website, um, thefuture.com, you guys can use the code gratitude. Gratitude, I should spell that for you. Uh, where should I write? I'll write it up here. Gratitude. You, too, will save 20%. But this deal ends tonight at midnight Pacific Standard Time. So at 12 a.m. tonight Pacific Standard Time, which is like nine hours away. That's it. Save 20%. The next time we're going to do a sale will be in July of next year. So if you're thinking about buying something, your indecision may cost you if you wait until past midnight tonight. All right, let's get into it. The exceptions. What are the exceptions to the rule? When is it okay to discount? Well, I'm talking about that. First, 
you can give a discount to your best and most loyal customers. The customers who have been working with you for years, who give you the first shot of like really cool projects, who pay on time, who are traditionally make up the biggest portion of the revenue that you have. And those are your best customers, so you can reward them by providing them a little bit of a discount if they need it. And I think those are who you should give it to and not the first-time customers. The first-time customers, the ones who have never worked with you before, who ask for a discount right up at the start, those are what we call clients. Those are the clients we call from hell. I have no relationship with you, and I want a discount right away. You stay away from these clients. Okay? And then you take care of these clients. And don't mix up the two. These, this sends the wrong signal to the group, okay? Your best, most loyal customers, you can give them a discount if you feel like they, it warrants one and to make things a little bit easier for them. The next idea is, I guess we're going to call this the Costco model, which is if they buy in bulk. So when you meet a client from hell and they ask you for a discount up front at the beginning of the relationship, you could say, well, I could probably give you a discount if you're willing to book multiple projects with us today. Not in the future, but today because there are economies of scale. So for example, let me break this down for you, okay? Say you have one project for $100,000, and they say, we'd like to get a discount on this. And then you can ask them, well, what kind of discount are you looking for? And I, if somebody's gonna ask me for a discount, I'm gonna ask them how much? Because in their mind, they might be looking for $10,000, and I might be thinking $50,000, and I want to know from them precisely, what kind of discount are you looking for? And sometimes it's a non-monetary discount. Perhaps they're looking for something else, like a, if you have a service business in hospitality, they might be looking for an extra night in the room or an upgrade or something like that. Something that doesn't cost you money to give them, those are things they might ask for. But in this case, in this scenario, let's say they ask you for a 20% discount, 20%. Okay, so the discount there would take you down to, I think by my math, 80K. And what you can do is you can turn back to them to say, like, I can give you a discount on this project if you're willing to give me three projects up front. So if, we, if you're willing to book three projects right now at 240K, well, I can save some money on my end by not having turnover on my team. I can concentrate resources, and we need to do this at the same time. If you're willing to do that, I can give you a discount for three projects. That is a great negotiation tactic that you can use to give people a discount for an advanced purchase that they make today, right now. Okay, and if you have questions, please feel free to comment down below. Ricky's going to read your comments, and he's waving. He's like, everything's good. Next thing is to test a concept viability whether or not a concept works or not. Let's pretend like you're in the manufacturing business and you make something, a hard good or something, and you want to see if the market actually wants it. And be warned, because this has happened to us before. When we post on social media, like we have a new cap or a new shirt or something, people are like, want, want, take my money, all that kind of stuff, right? And then when we go to make it, we realize the people who make a lot of noise actually do not follow through, do not actually purchase anything. So we want to test a concept's viability in the marketplace to see if it works. And a great place to do that is a platform called Kickstarter. You guys all are familiar with Kickstarter. You could say, look, I have a product that I'm going to sell to you at a discount below retail price when it goes into production. If you buy early with me, I can discount it a little bit. So again, the same thing. So uh, a product, let's say, Let's say you're me and you want to write a book. Let's say the book is 40 bucks, okay? You want to write a book and you're not quite sure if anybody will buy the book. You could say to them, well, if you buy it during this period, I will sell it to you for $30 so that you can save $10. You're saving $10, okay? That's the idea there. And if you have enough people who pay for it, you can then go into production and you can actually write or design the book as we have. And um, all apologies to everybody who backed us on the Kickstarter project. <laughs> the books are coming. I swear to God, it's coming. It is so coming. It's going to be shipping out this week as, as Ricky and Greg are sweating right now just thinking about it. Okay. Uh, another thing that you can do to provide a discount is a pre-launch. It's a very similar concept to testing something's viability. And we do this quite often when we have a new course that we want to launch. There's a period of time when we say, given that the course is not done yet and we're still in the 
production phases, if you're willing to invest, take on a little bit of risk, and it's tied to risk. I'm going to be right back. I'm going to grab another marker. If you are willing to take a little bit of risk with us, meaning you're willing to wait like 30 days, 30 to maybe 60 days, something like that, you can save money. And I, I'm going to do the dollar sign right save. You can save a little bit of money. And sometimes people are willing to say, yeah, we trust you. We know you're going to do a good job. This is a great way for me to get an advanced copy of this. And sometimes we throw in bonuses. That's another way you can incentivize people. If you buy during the pre-launch, you'll get X, Y, and Z. Maybe there's a bonus webinar, an ebook, or something else. We'll throw in an audio recording. We do this all the time. Another reason why you want to give a discount. Now, this one is going to be a little bit trickier to apply in principle, but I can give you guys an example when you want to use a good story. So when you discount without having a good story, it can only be seen as this thing must be worth less than that. But if you tie it to a really good story, and here's how you can do this. You can say, for example, if you buy during this period of time, we're going to give X percentage of the sale to a worthwhile cause of your choice. That's a good story. For us, one of the big promotions that we had earlier this year was when we were close to hitting, I think, 400,000 subscribers. And so all our fans were watching as the counter was ticking down. We thought we were going to hit 400,000 subscribers. And we had said, as a celebration with all our community, once we hit 400,000 for a period, 500,000? Sorry, correction, 500,000 subs. Thank you, Ricky, fact checker. When we hit 500,000 subs, we're going to do a flash sale for 24 hours, and we're going to give you a certain percentage off these kinds of products. So that's a story, and these are unusual, and they need to be a little bit unexpected. The problem with discounting and doing sales like in the retail model is we can almost expect that every holiday, every vacation, or not vacation, every holiday um, that's happening, there's going to be a sale and promotion. So all we have to do is wait them out, and they inevitably will lower their price. So the consumer has all the buying power at that point. Okay, last but not least, early payment. We, we do this sometimes, uh, and, and I've talked to many of, uh, I've tried to teach this concept to many people. If you write in to your invoices, in, when you do your invoices, your contract, if you write in, we will give you a 2% discount, net 15, meaning paid within 15 days of this invoice, you will receive a 2% discount on the total bill. Now, 2% doesn't seem like a lot, and it's not a lot in all, all contexts, right? If you look at it, 2% it's not a big in, uh, discount. But, as I've learned when I was taking a project management course, the person who was teaching the class said, most publicly traded companies have in their bylaws that they must pay invoices that offer a discount. They don't even specify how much of a discount. 1% would seem too little, so that's why we go with 2%. So if you discount an invoice, Net 15, meaning they have to pay you within 15 days, you give them 2%. You'll be surprised at how quickly you can get paid. Now, some companies will ignore this, and this is fine. So 2% discount. So what you do here is I'm going to give you a little tip so you don't lose money. I hate leaving money on the table. Is if you're going to bill a project for $100, when you go to build the estimate for this, build that at $102. So you've already made the money. So if you discount, It'll go back, back. It's not technically $100, but let's assume it is. It's $2 off. Then you'll get paid the amount that you wanted to get paid in the first place. And if they miss this by one day, then you get the 102 Now, this doesn't seem like a lot, except for when you add some zeros to this. So 102000 down to 100000 So you're going to give them $2,000 off. But you've made an extra $2,000. So build into your estimate the discount you plan on giving net 15 and th these days and dates can change if you want. It could be net 5, net 3, net 14, whatever day. Net 15 seems like a reasonable amount of time. Two weeks, essentially. All right. Ricky, any questions so far that we need to talk about? Again, you guys, if you guys want to buy anything before the end of today, Pacific Standard Time, midnight. It is a little after 3. It's 3.30, so you have about eight and a half hours. Punch in the code gratitude. You will get 20% off almost everything that we make. Okay, let's get into the good stuff. Why are you tuned in? Let's get right into it. Okay, now for those of you guys that are sneakerheads, Ricky, don't tell them what it is. For those of you guys that are sneakerheads, this is a Nike collaboration with a company. Let us know in the comments if you can recognize this pair of sneakers right away. This is just a little Easter egg built into this video. So, this is, so those of you guys that are watching it, who's the collaborator? 
Nike plus who? Nike times who? Okay. Let's look at this. Let's say this pair of shoes from Nike is 299 normal suggested MSRP. And they've done something crazy. For the math's sake, let's say they are going to discount this 50%. So they're going to say 50% off, right? And just so my math works out, I know people will give me a hard time on the math. It's $149, okay? $149. What is happening here? And why are we so compelled to buy when we see stuff like this? And it doesn't matter if you watch this video or not. I'm going to add in a little bit more detail on this. It doesn't matter if you watch this video and if you understand this concept or not. This is something that is bigger than you, meaning you can't fight what's happening on a psychological level. That's why I said this is a psychology of sales and discounting and why it works. Even if you know why it works, you're, you, you can't be immune to the effects of what's happening. And I'll explain why in a little bit, okay? So $149. Why are we so compelled to buy? Why I'm stressing out right now? Because I should be online. A couple things I put in my, my shopping cart. Why well, I need to close those deals before the end of day today or forever lose this deal. Let's talk about it. You see these four icons? I included these four icons to help you remember. So the first one's called an anchor, okay? It's called an anchor. Okay, if you think about it, if you're in a boat and you're fishing or something like that, let's pretend it's a boat and this is you. And if it's me, I'm wearing a big hat. Okay? A really big hat. <laughs> Ricky's laughing there. <laughs> my ridiculously large hat to keep the sun off my face. An anchor holds you to a spot. Right? So it prevents you from drifting too far away. So what happens here is a 299 is an anchor. You become fixated with this 299 so that you start to compare the 149 against the 299. And you start doing the math in your head. That's almost $150 off. Actually, it is $150 off. So you become obsessed with this number. But if you just presented this number to people and said, you could buy this shoe for $149, this seems like a lot for a pair of shoes, especially if you're from a place that doesn't have a lot of economic mobility. If you're not in the kind of middle to upper middle class, a $300 or $150 pair of sneakers is a lot of money. So this anchor means that you are fixated on this first piece of information that is $299, and now it's $149. So when you're talking to clients about money and projects, whenever you talk about money, you should use the anchor bias, okay? You should use the anchor bias to your advantage. If they say, how much should this logo cost? This is a very common conversation we have within our community. How much does this logo cost? You could say the last logo that I did for a company like yours was $25,000. But based on what you and I are talking about today, I don't think it needs to be that expensive. It could probably be done for less than 18000 See what I did there? I anchored high at twenty five k. I gave them a moment to think about it, to process it, for, to let the anchor do its work. Then I dropped the new number, and the new number, relatively speaking, is a lot more affordable than 25K. See, the way that we work is we need to compare things. We don't know if something, what I call the Goldilocks syndrome, which is the porridge is too hot, it's too cold, and it's just right. So we don't know if it's just right until we've tasted two other kinds of porridge, and now we know this is just right for us. So this is the first thing that's working in sales and why discounting works. When you have a high number, the new number becomes much more affordable, relatively speaking. Okay, well, that's pretty good, but that doesn't explain why we're all shopping like mad right now. Why is that, especially here in North America? What's happening? The other thing is this thing, okay? It's, it's a clock here because we're going to use another concept called scarcity. The time is going to run out. It creates a sense of urgency, so now we got two things working for us, the anchor bias and scarcity driving urgency. So we know Cyber Monday is going to end. When Tuesday happens, built into their name, the deal is going to go away. So you have a finite amount of time to act. Otherwise, you're going to lose out on something. You're going to totally lose out on this. And losing out on something is driving something else. When you lose out on something, it plays with your mind that there is the loss aversion bias that's going on here. I know there's a lot of bias 
words that we're using, loss aversion. Like we don't want to lose out on something that we think we have. Trial offers work like this. So you'll, you'll, you'll be allowed to try a subscription service. Usually software companies allow you to have a 30-day, 15-day trial, and then they start to charge you. There's an app that I downloaded that was fully featured, but it was only fully featured for 15 days. And they started charging me, I think, $2 a month now. And I was like, I don't even know if I want this but I'm not ready to quite cancel this. For young people, especially, you may know this form of psychology in what's happening here as FOMO. You guys know what FOMO means, right? FOMO means fear, that's a clue, of missing out. This is what's happening, unfortunately, on social media. People posting their fancy lifestyles, driving in their amazing cars, dating super beautiful, fancy people, and it creates FOMO in you. Like, I'm missing out on something. Why aren't I living that life for myself? This is another part of why this works, okay? The next one is this diamond. It also is playing in with scarcity in terms of availability. So this is scarcity of time. Limited time offer, flash sale, today only for the next four hours. Those kinds of things trigger what's happening. Oh. Okay. I see. Okay, okay. Okay, so scarcity and urgency for time. The next one is scarcity in terms of quantity. Okay? And usually, quantity is controlled by manufacturing. So when supply is less than demand, price goes up. Okay, so quantity, if there are fewer of these things and more people that want them, then the price should go up. So if you want to really trigger this, here's how we do this, okay? So we're going to say the new ad is going to be $299 um, today only, today only, save 50% off. They never say spend 50%. They just say save. So it's like the whole sunk loss thing. Okay, so save 50%, right? For $149 while supplies last. While supplies last. 149 while supplies last. And you can even show a counter. So Ricky, did they figure out what shoe this is yet? They did. Congratulations, guys. If you've stuck it out with me in this video so far, this is Nike. X, fear of God, right? Fear of God. That's the designer. That's who's doing this. So congratulations for everybody that figured out you sneakerheads. Give yourself a pat on the back that you love sneakers, okay? Little snappies. Okay, here we go. And if we say that there's only a limited quantity, this is usually what they do. You'll notice this. When you add something to your shopping cart, what do they say? Limited inventory of stock. They say that to stoke your feelings of missing out. Sometimes it happens. They'll even tell you three left, only three left. It may or may not be true, but even if it is or not, it doesn't really matter. The fact that there are only three left triggers this whole quantity issue of scarcity, and now I feel like I really need to buy this thing. Whew, this is a lot for us to go through. And why is this period so stressful for some people? We're spending money. We're getting what it is we want. We're saving money because it comes this last bit, this knife, this knife, okay? Because it forces us through urgency to make a decision. We have to decide. We have to decide if we want to buy this before it all goes away. We have to decide. And... This is very difficult for a lot of people. Should I, shouldn't I? Do I need this? Is this a really good price? Will it go lower or higher? So these are things that we're struggling with. And for a lot of people, these three things combined together make for a very powerful thing to push people past the resistance of not buying or not signing on the dotted line. Somebody else is going to get this from you. And you felt that kind of pain in your heart. So this, uh, the abandoned cart thing, really gets into the loss aversion bias. You didn't even buy it yet. It was sitting in your cart. And when you go to check out what happens, they're like, you know what? It's sold out now. So what happens? You're like me. You start to regret. You start to get upset. You're like, Chris, why didn't you decide earlier? What were you waiting for? So that emotion that you're feeling is really the thing that all this stuff is tapping into. There's an excellent, excellent book. cannot recommend it more. It's called, here's the book. It's called Influence. 
It's the psychology of persuasion. Written by Dr. Caldini, Robert Caldini, of persuasion. Okay? And I think there are six or seven big concepts in here in the, in the book Influence that studies how human beings behave and why we do the crazy things that we do. And how when you understand what the triggers are, you can use them for the force of good or the force of evil, depending on how you do this. Influence the psychology of persuasion. Okay. I know what you're thinking. I think I know what you're thinking. Ricky, what are they thinking? Do you know? You have the consumer sentiment right now, the audience sentiment. Why am I telling you all this? Because I'm going to teach you something. But before I do, I want to remind everybody, today is Cyber Monday. This is the last bit of our four-day sale. And we've had a phenomenal month. We've broken our sales records. It's been a personal high for all of us. I went in on a really high note here, guys. So we're offering 20% off. If you guys use the code GRATITUDE, gratitude when you go. So you're going to go to thefuture.com. Hopefully you find something that you want. You can save 20% off by using the word gratitude. And hopefully I'm spelling this correctly because it won't work on checkout if you don't use the right code there. Gratitude. We're grateful for you during this Thanksgiving. Gratitude. And some of you guys are like, well, why should I buy anything? Aren't I getting the videos for free? I guess you are getting the videos for free. And the only way we're able to give you guys the videos for free is because there are people just like you who have purchased things and who have donated money to us so we can keep this experiment called the future going. Our mission to teach a billion people on planet Earth how to make money doing what they love, this is part of what we're doing. These printouts weren't free. Putting this thing together isn't free. The three people that are standing here p making this happen for you, it's not free. So we appreciate everybody. We're grateful for you for buying stuff from us. Okay, let's get into it. How do we apply this? Can discounting work for you? And yes, it can. I'm going to show you how right now. Hopefully this is where the video, the retention spike goes up. I want to introduce you to a concept that most people don't talk about. It's a concept that I've tried and have used very successfully over and over again. So now the jig is up because I'm going to tell you what's happening to you right now. It's called the reverse sale. I wanted to take the words and flip it over, but I decided not to because it's going to be too hard to read. This is the reverse sale concept. Let's talk about it. Okay, some of you guys know I make a typography course. I teach typography, right? And there are not many typography courses out there, thankfully, because I don't like competition. So there's a typography course, and you can buy now and all that kind of stuff. It's $149. Since we have no competition, there's very little supply, meaning us. And if there's demand for people to learn how to design with type, chances are you're going to look around, and this is going to be it. $149 course, right? And I think it's really, really good. I'm biased because I wrote it. I produced it with uh, Ricky and Jonah and everybody else that helped me put this together. Produced this thing. And this cost me way more to learn than $149. I went to Art Center, studied design. This class should be more. So I'm having a conversation with Ben Burns. And I tell him, Ben, this class is too cheap. I believe people question whether or not this class is valuable or not at this price point. How could it be at this price point? So I said to Ben, I want to change the price. He goes, what do you mean? I want to raise the price. So he goes, okay, how much do you want to raise it by? I said, well, for right now, I want to double the price. So I want to change the price. Here we go with the red marker again. To $2.99. He goes, what? Why would you charge $2.99? He said, just hear me out. Just make it happen. Charge $299 for the course. He goes, okay. I said, I want you to email everybody that's interested in taking this class that in a certain number of days, the price will be going up to $299. And I said, you don't need to explain more, okay? It's going to be $299. If you need to, tell them I'm going to update a few modules, but the course is going up. It's our most popular course that teaches design. It's $299. And you know what happened the first day the email went out? We did, get this, at, the, at this price, over $10,000, I think it was maybe $16,000, I can't remember, I'll just write 16 here, $16,000 in sales in 24 hours. Okay? And I, I don't remember the details, but let's say 30 days, this course goes up to $299. So this is the best price to buy now. 
What's happening here? Well, we have the anchor. Anchor's working for us, right? Let's check it off. We have the anchor. The anchor says, this course, $149, is actually worth $299. We have the sense of urgency. We have urgency through the time. In 30 days, it's going up. So in 30 days, it better go up or we're lying to our customers. There is no scarcity in terms of like limited quantity. This is a digital product. That's the beautiful thing. And you, you need to decide and you have 30 days from today to make this decision. Are you going to lose out on the deal or not? But you remember that little icon, the train? What I want to do is I want to train our customers to have buyer assurance that the products that they buy, when they buy it, will almost always be the best price. Because if anything, our products and courses go up in price. That's the behavior I want you to be aware of, okay? So what we do is we, we reward the early adopters, the innovators, to come in to buy something when it's not even fully baked. They're the people who buy the pre-launch, pre-sale stuff. They get it at the absolute best price. Now, originally, this class was $79. Then it went to $99, $149, and now it's at $299. It's selling briskly, so the issue wasn't the price. What we wanted to do is to let people know we reward you for buying early. And speaking of buying early, I just want to let you guys know that <laughs> this is the last opportunity this year until July of next year in terms of our planned sales. And just if you guys want to mark your calendar because you, you like the things that we make, there's only two times that we really sell things or put things on sale. It's during Independence Day, July 4th, and during Thanksgiving holiday and Black Friday. Okay, that's the only two times. So you're going to wait quite a few months. So if you say to yourself, if, if I buy something like this today with 20% off, can I put that knowledge to use and make the money back in time for the next promotion? That's the only real question you have for yourself. How can you apply this concept of the reverse sale to a service design business? Any ideas on how to do that? Why don't you go ahead and let us know in the comments below, and I'm going to get into it in one second. I'm going to take this opportunity to see if there are any Really great questions that are coming in from the, the live stream. Ricky, are there any great questions? Um, no. No. No? Nope. Not, not a single question. How many people are watching right now? 495. Okay. Well, hello, 495 people watching live with us today. I hope you guys have enjoyed the conversation thus far. I will be doing more of these whiteboard sessions. So if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know what you think. Share it with your friends. I like teaching. I like helping people, and if this is a winning combination, we'll keep doing these. I have at least two or three more of these planned whiteboard sessions with you. Okay. How can we apply this in our business? You can call up all of your existing clients today and tell them that starting in 2020, January 1st, your prices for services are going to go up. Your hourly rate is going to go up. Your project rate is going up. And you could just tell them what that is. And you could tell them, in, in appreciation of their patronage, of their loyalty, how many years of, of, of service that you've been able to provide them in terms of the relationship you've been able to build, you are willing to lock in this price if, they can, if they're willing to book, in, book something with you within the next X number of days. Is there anything that's coming down the line? When you let people know what's going to happen, it will start to trigger all the emotional, psychological things that are going on that you yourself are victim to or succumb to yourself. So tell them right now, send out an email blast, call them up, call some of your best clients up and tell them your price is going up starting 2020 of next year and see if any of them pull the trigger. What's really great is even if they don't pull the trigger, you've had the difficult conversation of the price is going up so that when they call you next, you can say to them, oh yeah, Mary, you remember last year when we talked about this, my prices are now this? And Mary will hopefully will say, yes, I do remember. I'm sorry I couldn't book you at that point in time. I totally understand what you're doing. Here's money for the new price. And this is how you can easily raise the price. It's nice when you tie it to things that people associate with change, like January 1st, New Year's. That's a great reason to, to change your prices, okay? This is how you use the reverse sale. Chris, have you, ever, have you ever used this for blind? Do you have a, an example? No, because we don't have fixed prices. We always try to price the client. So there's never a standard price for anything. I, see. I have used some of these other concepts, though, back from here. Like this one here. This is what I'm pulling from right here. Right? 
I have used some of these things before. When clients have called us in the past and they ask for a discount, I say, if you're willing to pay for this in advance, more often than not, about 50%, they're like, no, we're not ready to do that right now. They try to maneuver around that. And every once in a while, they're like, yes, we're ready. We'll buy three from you right now. That's awesome. We do provide a discount to our loyal customers. And the discount usually sounds something like this. They will say, Chris, because they're usually up front with us, we don't have a lot of money for this project. It's something that's a pet project for the CMO or the CEO. We don't have a ton of money for it. I'll, and usually I'll say to them, look, tell me what you have. It doesn't matter to me. I really appreciate the business, and I'll do it for whatever you have. And I put that back on them. Sometimes if you put it back on them, they, if they have a generous spirit and they're good-hearted people and they're ethical, they will come back and probably offer you more money than what you were willing to quote it for under the discount price, Okay. We have tested the constant viability. viability. We've done pre-launching, so we've done Kickstarter for sure. We've pre-launched our courses. There's a great course that's been pre-launched recently with Greg Gunn, Color for Designers. We've had a good story about why we're discounting something when we hit 500,000 subs. And we've also put into our contract the early payment clause to get them to pay faster, and it does, it does work. Not always, but it does work. So I think we've done all of these. Was that the question, Ricky? Yep. Thank Great. you. Thanks for asking that. Whoever asked that, if it was you, thank you. Okay. Let's get right back into this. So if you're in a productized business, if you can do anything that scales, a digital product download, a t-shirt, a cup, a cap, whatever it is, you can do the reverse sale and say the price is going up. This happens quite a bit. You can see this in Tesla. Now Tesla, uh, we were generation one model S owners of a Tesla. And they had offered us so many different things because they needed to establish a customer base. Free lifetime charging. Um, there's a couple other things that they threw in there. And at first I thought, yeah, this is a gimmick. This is a total gimmick. They're going to offer this to everybody. But now as we can see, once the install base of customers have been established, now they no longer offer like new lifetime charging for your Tesla. That's free. Now you have to pay for it above a certain amount. And so that's what we're seeing there. So they, they would send us emails and marketing things to say like, buy this before this period of time and still get lifetime free charging. They would do that, right? That's what was happening there. So now that you know these concepts, be on the lookout for promotions that hit your inbox when you land on a site. What's happening to you? What are they trying to do to get you to feel like you have to buy? I think that's it for this video. I don't have anything else to say unless there's a question from Ricky. There was a good question. Let there me, was? Okay, there dig was. it up, man. All right. And if I can, I will do my best to answer it and then we'll end today. When should you start using the reverse sale? If, if, is, if you're a beginner designer, is this something that you can apply directly or when is the best time to apply this? Okay, so the reverse sale and the sale are exactly the same. They are fundamentally exactly the same in terms of their structure. So maybe this was a clickbait title and talking to you about why sales work, but the reverse sale is just as effective. So the next time a client calls you and asks you for a discount, stop them there, try to do the reverse sale on them, and say, look, I don't discount, but I do know that my prices are going up. Cost of doing goods is much higher. I have a bigger team. They're more expensive. I've recruited new, new talent. I've expanded services. Things are going up. Give that a shot. This is all in hopes to try to help you guys understand price anchoring, the scarcity uh, in terms of time, and fear of missing out. Those are the concepts that you can use. I'll give you another one that you can use. Okay, here's a free one. This is the bonus one. The bonus one is this. When clients are calling you and they're inquiring about whether or not they want to do work with you, you have a pleasant conversation. It's, you tell them how much it's going to cost what it kind of involves, and then you're going to say to them, please let me know in the next couple of days because I can only guarantee availability because I'm getting a lot of requests and multiple holds on the business. So three projects are about to drop. If those projects drop before yours, I'm not going to be able to take on this project. You can create that same scarcity mindset. If you are a freelancer, a true freelancer, when you're being booked and putting, getting put on hold, one thing that you can do this is a tip that a lot of freelancers use, is when a company calls you and says, are you available in the next two weeks for work? You can say, yes, but I'm gonna have to put you on second hold. Somebody else has already reserved that time. By saying that, you've created a sense of urgency in their mind that they may lose you. So they may say, we want to challenge the hold, we wanna book you right now, and we're gonna guarantee you work for those two weeks. 
Then you say, let me get back to you. You have a conversation with yourself because there was nobody that put you on hold. You call them back. You say, look, I can get out of it. You need to send me um, a check for 50% up front. The time is bought. You got it. That's how you do that. So that's scarcity again, okay? Creating urgency behind uh, a transaction. That's it. Anything else, Ricky? Nope. Okay, fantastic. You guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Today, we talked about... Nope, not that one. Today, we talked about, we talked about this one right here. We talked about... Blah, blah, blah. We talked about Black Friday and Cyber Monday, Cyber Monday, and the psychology of sales and why discounting works. Now, I don't want you guys to discount. I want you to be able to get the full value of what it is that you're doing. So once you understand how the sale works, try to apply the reverse sale. Let me know after you try this, what's worked, what doesn't work, what challenges you have in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.